Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jagdeep Alwali, and I'm the founding secretary of the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce of Greater Houston, which I currently serve as executive director. Join me in thanking Gabriela Zambrano, Nora Noble Kristoff, Naomi uh, Naomusi Yagambi, Rupesh Sangvi, and Surit Thakur for sharing their knowledge and experience. I want to start off by introducing our chamber executive committee, our board, our directors at large, and our advisors. Today's webinar will be recorded and the recordings will be shared. We are also live on Facebook through the Chamber's Facebook account and through the accounts of several of our partners. Uh, and we encourage you to share on your Facebook if you're logging in as an attendee. We thank our course of, for today's event. And we want to thank the Minority Business Development Agency, which is our co-host today, and our partners, Club 24, Houston Community College, Houston District Export Council, the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council, Thai Houston, the US India Chamber of Commerce, Dallas, Fort Worth, and the World Trade Center, Mumbai. We are proud to be serving the business community for over 20 years, and we work closely with our sister chambers and associations. On behalf of the chamber, we thank our partner organizations who helped promote today's event, our community partners and our media partners. We want to thank our long-term sponsors whose support help us to continue to serve the community. These include Brask Inc., Lyondell Bissell, Piping Technology, Shipcom and Foster Global. And we want to recognize Shell for supporting our Women Mean Business and Shell Distinguished Lecture Series. I would now like to invite the president of the chamber, Tarush Anand, to uh, make the welcome remarks. But before I do that, I'm proud that the chamber is hosting today's event. And we are giving you both sides of the story. Naya and the speakers from Houston will be telling you the benefits of exports. But we have two practitioners uh, who are clients. Uh, one is a member of the chamber, the other is a client of the Department of Commerce, and they'll be sharing their stories. And I would encourage everybody to listen to what they have to say because they have gone through the process. And I have a saying that as a businessman, I remember living in Texas when I tried to do business in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or New Jersey, the culture and things were different. So when you're doing business with a country which is on a different time zone, a different culture, uh, uh, 24 hours to get there, you have to realize you have to be very patient uh, in your efforts. You have to be very persistent. And today's program will not only tell you what you need to do, but it will remind you through the voice of our two business owners on what they did to succeed. With that, I come back to inviting the chairman of our board, the president of the chamber, Tarush Anand, uh, to make the welcome remarks. He is a fellow of the Litigation Council of America, Trial Lawyers Honorary Society, composed of less than one half to one percent of America's lawyers. He is a partner and a shareholder in the law firm of Brown Sims and has received many uh, awards. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to invite the president of the chamber, Tarush Anand, to make the welcome remarks. He will then hand over to Gabriela, who from that point will run the program, and I will come back at the end to wrap up. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jagdeep. Uh, good morning or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. We're glad you could join us today for another webinar that we're presenting uh, with some excellent partner organizations. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the Chamber of Commerce, uh, who we are and what we do. As Jagdeep mentioned, we were founded in uh, over 20 years ago, in 1999. And if you think back to that time, you'll remember that uh, the relationship between the US and India was quite different than what it is today. Uh, it was a different time overall, of course, we were still uh, in the last millennium. Uh, but in terms of the relationship with India, uh, India was still on its, its path upwards and the, the relationship with India hadn't quite matured to the level that it is today. Uh, at that time, a group of business owners in Houston, in, com in conjunction with the consulate, realized that the, the growth and the uh, relationship with India was on an upward trajectory. And we set out to form an organization that could capitalize on that and help it move along. 
And so for 21 years now, the Chamber of Commerce has been there to facilitate trade and commerce, both with and within the greater Houston region. Uh, we've done excellent things, and I think we re re realized some tangible results as because of what we've done. Uh, there are many examples we can, we can cite to, but, but some of the very concrete examples are when Mahindra uh, was looking to locate a facility here in the U.S., uh, it was the result of a trade mission led by the chamber, along with uh, the former county judge, that resulted in Mahindra choosing the Houston area in Harris County as a location in which to locate a facility here in the U.S. Uh, we were involved with uh, getting the first United flight between the U.S. and India started. And there are many, many direct tangible things that we, that can, we can point to that resulted from the good work that we do. So I invite you to visit our website, iaccgh.com to learn more about our programs and our events and invite you to attend them if you find them of interest. With that, let me move on to inviting one of our speakers for today, Gabriela Zambrano. She is the project director of the Houston MBDA Business Center. A proven leader, Gabriela was the business development officer for the city of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity. Before that, she worked as a supervisor for a local insurance and income tax company. She's a graduate uh, of the Catholic University of Santiago de Guaquil in Ecuador, where she earned her master's degree in business administration. Before that, she earned a Bachelor of Arts from Florida Atlantic University. She's a native of New Jersey and the daughter of Ecuadorian parents and someone who speaks fluent Spanish. It's my pleasure to welcome Gabriela. Hello and everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for the introduction. I really appreciate it. Okay, um, I'm excited about today's event. So let me just share um, my screen and hopefully um, it's being shared. Hold on. Hmm. My name is Gabriela Zambrana and I'm the director of the Houston MBDA Business Center. MBDA stands for Minority Business Development Agency, and we're the only federal program tasked to help and grow existing minority-owned businesses. Our vision is economic prosperity for all American business enterprise. We assist our clients by providing access to local and global markets, one-on-one -on -one business consulting service, and invitation to trainings and events. Uh, here in Houston, we're operated by Houston Community College, and I would like to introduce my colleague, Mark Pregg and Deidre Sutton, business advisors, and Jessica Vasquez. If you want to learn more about us, send us an email at mbda at hccs.edu. Now, today I'm the moderator of this event, and like Jagdeep said, we have incredible panelists. We have two people that are coming from the public sector who are gonna tell us what's going on and then our business owner who are success in what they do regarding um, exporting um, products to India. Um, so the event will go, each panelist will introduce himself and then make a presentation. And then at the end, we'll break into questions and answer. So the first panelist is the director of the US Commercial Service and that is Naya Igambi. And if you plan to uh, um, expand your company abroad, Naya is the person to know. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Naya Igambi. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Thank you, Gabriella, for that um, introduction. Uh, I would also like to thank the Indo-American Chamber and MBDA for the opportunity to speak to the, today's program. I am Namusi Igumbi, uh, Director of the U.S. Commercial Service Office here in Houston, and I'll get to uh, more detail about what our agency does. But I do want to applaud you for attending today's program. If you are currently um, engaged in trade to India, congratulations. And if you are highly interested in engaging in trade to India, uh, I applaud you for being here and taking advantage of the dynamic panel today. Uh, next slide, please. India is a key trading partner for the United States. Um, in 2020, they were ranked 11, down just two slots from uh, 2019. Overall trade to uh, between US and India was totaled at $80 billion. Um, and now we expect those numbers to trend upward as we come, as we build back from the pandemic. 
I will tell you that overall trading, uh, including exports and imports between the two countries, um, included agricultural products, mineral fuels, precious metals, um, machinery, organic chemicals, and just a slight difference where the U.S. has exported uh, aircraft to India. Today, in the brief time that I have, I just really want to highlight the tools that the U.S. Uh, Commercial Service, as part of the um, U.S. Department of Commerce, has for, for U.S. companies to export to India. Um, also, I want to highlight um, why exports matter. Um, when we're talking to companies about export opportunities, we really want to focus on helping them diversify their client base, especially when 95% of consumers live outside of the U.S. The U.S. Commercial Service is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce International Trade Administration, and we're headquartered in Washington, D.C. We have 100 field offices, and I'm located typically downtown Houston in the Mickey Lito Federal Building. But the advantage of working with us um, is the leverage that you will have by working with our colleagues overseas in the U.S. embassies and consulates in more than 70 countries. Our main focus, and you see the slide in front of me, is to help strengthen, um, leverage the, the strength of the U.S. government to help companies gain market access, to have fair competition, to help companies identify the right business partners, and help them export faster and more profitably. Next slide, please. So this is actually what our website looks like, www.trade.gov. And it's really the first step in getting information about the U.S. Commercial Service and ITA as a whole. That's the International Trade Administration. But really uh, what resources are available to you as a U.S. company and then um, how you can access those through our um, footprint, both in the U.S. field and overseas. Next slide. So today I want to focus on um, kind of our four key pillars, export counseling, market intelligence, business matchmaking, and commercial diplomacy. Next slide, please. So um, we understand the challenges that the businesses have faced in the pandemic, and we're pleased to be partnering with the chamber with MBDA um, because it truly takes a village to help companies be successful. And a lot of what we do on a daily basis is the export counseling, one-on-one -on -one consultation with companies to devise an export strategy, but more importantly, identify the appropriate um, customized business solution to help them be successful in India and other global markets uh, around the world. So, um, and where we're not able to assist, we partner with MBDA, we partner with the chamber and other um, state and federal partners to make sure that companies have the resources they need to um, be successful. Um, also, you'll note here in blue, so I really want to emphasize the products that we've been really working on um, during the pandemic. Um, and also, Houston um, having experienced the energy crisis as well, also affecting our clients. The e-commerce innovation lab, and I'm excited that we have two e-commerce um, companies on this call today, and I look forward to hearing their presentations. We've had to pivot in the pandemic, and a lot of that has been helping our companies really take a second look at their websites and making sure that their website presence and their social media presence is attractive to international buyers. I will tell you in Houston, our companies are fearless and they are accustomed to getting on a plane and jet setting to the markets of interest. But obviously um, that hasn't been the case in the last year. And so we've been really digging deep in our digital tools to make sure that companies can still expand globally even when they're not able to travel. Our um, main focus too is market intelligence. So not only devising a customized strategy for companies, but also helping them identify the appropriate markets, whether that is a broad uh, look at the market through our country commercial guide or customized 
customized market research where you hire us, you contract us to dig deep and provide a customized uh, market program for you, market research program for you. Um, companies are also availing themselves of the international market check. And that's where we can do a quick dive into about five markets, reach out to industry experts to do a, an initial assessment of your, your products or services um, viability in that market. Also, please take note of the international company profile. This is the background check, the due diligence that we provide to companies um, to make sure that they are partnering with uh, you know, viable companies. And a lot of our clients take advantage of this. While they might get leads through their websites and they might get leads at trade shows and trade events, then they have to take it a step further and do the due diligence. And the international company profile is the tool for that. Next slide. Really truly our added value is the business matchmaking and you're leveraging US government resources in country to identify appropriate partners. And we also work with Chamber and the MBDA to, to ensure that um, companies are reconnecting to the right resources. And I'm excited that um, our state of Texas partner is on board and she's gonna talk about a program that helps you uh, fund some of these services. Highlighted in blue are single company promotion and our international partner search. Some of you may be familiar with our Gold Key service, and that's where we set up three to five business appointments in country. Obviously, our clients have not been able to travel overseas, so we really pivoted and focused on virtual services and the international partner searches has been leading in that instance. And then as companies are looking to be more creative, they're leaning into that single company promotion where we will customize a program for your uh, co your company, your product, your service. So it could be everything from a, a breakfast briefing to a lunch meeting, a technical seminar, or even a reception at a consul general's home overseas. So lots of companies are looking increasingly at the single company promotion. Next slide. Um, we look forward to engaging um, trade events in the future. Um, I'm seeing some of our own offices and our partners, including states and cities, pivot to a virtual trade mission um, program. But you know, a lot of our clients do lean into face-to-face uh, -face trade events. And two here on your left are Discover Global Markets. Some of you may have participated in the um, 2019 Discover Global Markets that we hosted here in Houston, focusing on power and building the Middle East and Africa. We are looking at um, the next uh, global Discover Global Markets to be named and a trade wins in 2022 that will actually happen in the Middle East. So these are both domestic and international trade events that are signature programs for the US Commercial Service and the US Department of Commerce. But um, just before we leave this slide, why trade events matter um, for us is that we typically will not only staff U.S. pavilions and oversee trade shows, but we also recruit international buyers to domestic trade shows. For example, one of our key programs in Houston is the Offshore Technology Conference. In years past, um, as recently as 2019, we've um, recruited over a thousand international buyers from 40 markets to meet face-to-face -face with U.S. companies, both exhibiting and attending OTC. And we look forward to the opportunity to do the same in the near future. And last but not least, uh, advocacy. And I talked about the market access, um, fair competition, and uh, addressing non-trade tar trade barriers, non-trade <laughs> barriers, non-tariff trade barriers. Let me get that again. Non-trade, nor non-tariff trade barriers. Wow. Um, so that's where the commercial diplomacy comes into play. And uh, we have an advocacy center where U.S. companies can develop themselves of the, the strength and the leverage of the U.S. government to make sure they're getting a fair um, opportunity to bid on foreign tenders. Um, we're also evaluating our uh, bilateral and multilateral agreements to make sure that all parties are living up to those agreements. But uh, this is really engaging us at a higher level, um, government to government, uh, as far as the commercial diplomacy and the advocacy. Next slide. 
So with regards to India, um, we have, as you can see, multiple offices in India. And I actually had the opportunity to travel to India myself um, in 2010 on a renewable energy and energy trade mission with our then Deputy Assistant Secretary Rokana. And I had an opportunity to visit Delhi, Mumbai, and Chennai. And we've often hosted some of our colleagues from those offices in Houston um, over the course of my career. But I will tell you that um, my office here in Houston is your first stop to connecting to those offices. And if you'd like to see more and learn more about our offices in India, you can see the website there, trade.gov forward slash India. Next slide. So here's my contact uh, information, and I look forward to engaging you um, in the future on um, your opportunities in India or any other global markets that are in interest. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Naya, for a very thorough presentation about the U.S. commercial service. Uh, I don't want to like, I know some of your service, you charge fees. And I know Nora, she's um, our next presenter. So guys, just stay right here. I know uh, Naya, but Nora is the person to know if you're looking for, uh, you have to apply for a small business grant in order if you want to take your business abroad. So it is my pleasure to introduce Nora Noble Christoph. Um, hold on a second. You're ready, Nora. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. I'm Nora Noble Kristoff, and I'm a grants coordinator with the Texas Department of Agriculture. Don't let the agriculture part uh, fool you. Um, we're here to help any small business of Texas succeed in exporting, and we do that through the State Trade Expansion Program commonly known as the STEP program, which is administered by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Next slide. So the purpose is really to help any small business who has been in business for at least one year in the state of Texas to either start exporting or search for new international markets. So of course, this applies definitely to India or any other international market that you are looking to explore. And um, it's really to help expand small business export capacity. Next slide. So what we offer is a funding source of up to $10,000 for each small business that applies. Um, and this helps with a variety of export activities. Next slide. So as Naya went over, uh, this, these stipend activities that we cover um, include the U.S. Commercial Services Programs, which is kind of an excellent opportunity to kind of get your feet wet, figure out what market you really want to explore, and have them kind of do the groundwork for you. But uh, additional resources are market analysis, compliance testing for your product to enter that market, um, export counseling and training programs, fees for shipping sample products, whether you're just uh, shipping to the market, to businesses or to the trade show that you are attending. Um, as of now, we don't have any state coordinated trade shows at the moment that might may maybe change after COVID. But if you are interested in any trade mission, trade show or sales trip, whether you wanna attend by yourself through the US commercial services or any other entity, we reimburse for those fees as well. Uh, we also reimburse for a subscription to export research tools. Um, and I think there's a few more on this slide, a few. Yes. Um, and one of the biggest ones that we kind of uh, delved into in the past uh, few months because of COVID is website. Uh, so we now allow for website design, translation, uh, SEO, localization services, and e-commerce. So you could use the full amount of your award on these activities uh, and also for design of marketing media. So this is placement of ads in international magazines, uh, web, ad, ad, oops, web ads, um, social media ads, um, or if you're making any brochures uh, for international markets or trade shows, that's allowable as well. Um, if you are awarded, uh, there are some limits to these amounts that you could spend with your award. Uh, for example, you could see like for design of marketing media or for fees of shipping samples, there's a capped amount there. Um, but of course, when you get awarded, we'll go over those more uh, thoroughly. 
Next slide. So um, for application of the step, um, we are currently closed. However, we are opening up in May for um, two options. We either are going to have a short option available where you actually can get awarded sometime in May and spend it uh, in three months time, which I know is really short, but if you have anything like website or design of media that you're kind of looking to do, that might be a good way to spend those funds. And additionally, we'll have um, a second option where you will be awarded in fall of 2021, and you'll be able to spend these funds until August of 2022. Um, and all of this could be found on our website, which is right here, which the slides will be given out after this. Um, but if you have any additional um, questions or want more information on the service, uh, feel free to give me um, a call or email me, which is uh, my contact information is on the next slide. Um, but yeah, that is my presentation on the STEP grant. And if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. Hey, Nora, so I know we have a lot of people registered from everywhere. Since this is from the Texas Department, are these only businesses that are in Texas that can apply for this grant? Yes, that's true. However, the Small Business Administration gives out these grants to most states. Um, not all states, I believe right now 48 of them have that available. Um, most of the time, it's not the Texas Depart or not the, the Department of Agriculture that gives it out. Usually it's the state's economic development agency that gives them out. So if you're in a different state, just reach out to your economic development agency and most likely they will have this program. It might be run a little bit differently, but um, most of the activities are still um, allowable that I went over. All right, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go to our next uh, participant and then at the end, hopefully people are gonna start writing their questions in the Q&A. Uh, so our next participant is Rupesh Sangavi, he's, and he's the founder and CEO of Ergoed E. Um, he's, he's actually a graduate with a master's in chemical engineering from Tamu in 2000. He founded the e-commerce business in 2009 and grew to the top line revenue of $150 million in 2020. Uh, Igor E is an online retailer where they sell general consumer merchandise like toys, electronic, beauty, books, pet products, um, and so forth, using their websites and marketplace platforms like Amazon. Uh, they have been selling, exporting directly to consumers in India for more than six years now. So if you want, if you really want to pick their brain about who actually started their business and exporting to India, Rupesh is the person to talk. Hello, Rupesh. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you for that generous introduction, Gabriela. Um, hello, everybody. My pleasure to be on this panel and would be happy to help with my experience and uh, knowledge, whatever I can, to help you grow your business in India. Um, to me, India is like this is a well known that it, India is one of the most promising market, especially with the fast adoption of every technology. Um, every modern technology, including cell phone or e-commerce. So uh, India is growing very rapidly on e-commerce scale. And we have been selling um, in India for past six years. And we, uh, we primarily sell through marketplaces. We have uh, acquired a couple of companies in India, uh, brands like Gadget Bucket, but uh, primarily we are still like, I mean, marketplace is marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, Flipkart that drives majority of, of business. And we, uh, we also sell some through B2B channels, but it is uh, relatively in single digit percentage. And the way we have set up uh, like, and this is, probably one of the most important information is that we do not have to change our process or do anything um, out of way to be able to serve those customers in India. Uh, we have signed up with quite uh, like at least two freight forwarders in United States. So like, I mean, to our suppliers, to us, we are doing nothing are uh, different than shipping to uh, address in United States. And 
with like with maybe sending them one excel file so freight forwarders are the ways to go where you don't have to deal with shipping directly to india but you can use an intermediate step like freight forwarder to serve customers and um, i can go in more detail on that that how we do it and they obviously deliver anywhere in india they deliver packages duty uh duty and taxes prepaid so when customer gets the product they don't have to shell out any extra money than what they committed at the time of purchase so that makes uh transaction uh little less frictionless and makes customer happy that they don't have to pay at the time of receiving goods so and the freight forwarders they that we work with uh, are in compliance that they would uh a charge us for duty and taxes um few things that we learned while selling in india one is that uh, the option that we like when you sell, when uh, uh, when, a, when you sell on website there is a, a one popular option which is practically unheard of in united states is called cod and that kind of stands for collection of money on the delivery um it is a good option for indian seller maybe a semi good option but definitely we have disabled that option after a lot of like after losing quite a bit of money and lot of returns so i would like i would advise you to think uh, hard and fast before you at uh, like based on my experience that it is not a good option for a seller based out of united states um the like one thing we have learned hard way is that lot of time the i mean like people the world are like the world is catching up fast with the quality expectations um at at one point uh, we thought that in um, a market like india can uh, take quality less than the best but it is not the case you have to be on top of quality people people who are buying a uh, customers buying from the website they have the top quality expectations and make sure that you serve them as good a quality as you would serve to the best of your customers in united states um this is just a, like i'm sharing this what we learned from our experience so that you don't like reinvent the wheel um the other one is spread your listings and inventory to many marketplace in us uh, amazon is by far the biggest marketplace when it comes to market uh, biggest marketplace in india they are probably number 1 number 2 it changes on the like depending on which data you look at but they are definitely not um, there, there is a definitely a competition so please, like do take advantage of competition and spread your inventory as wide as you can and one of the um, major friction point uh, for in, in like for selling in india is that uh, banking that according to indian norms you cannot like i mean just be paid in united states dollar um, you'll have to kind of take the money in uh, indian rupees and then there are there is a lot some paperwork to get repatriate that money back to us uh, there are a lot of sellers have found ways around it uh, the way we do that is we have a indian entity like indian counterpart or indian partner who sort of collect like who is in a business agreement with us so they collect money and then they repatriate that money back to um, back to us we have taken a professional uh, legal advice and i think the arrangement that we have is very clean and in compliance with the law so if you need any help with that please feel free to reach out to me um, and the uh, another way uh, that a few people have found ways to do business is that in india surprisingly amazon is not allowed to sell themselves like i mean the way amazon is a marketplace and a seller themselves in india it is not the case so what happens is they set up couple of um, very dominant quasi partnership uh, with the seller in india like apario retail and cloudtel so quite a few sellers that i know 
uh, they want to sell uh, direct to consumer they sign uh, they have a partnership with them so that those retailers a uh, quasi amazon retailer takes the inventory and then they in turn sell it but they might limit you only to amazon so if you want to sell inventory across all the marketplaces or on your website maybe you need a partner there uh, on the marketing side um, like it is kind of uh, what i've seen and study over uh, time is that focus on emotional leaning marketing uh, it really appeals to the customers little bit more um, if you are a brand owner uh, try to use uh, tools like whatsapp facebook and most of us may be familiar with those tools like whatsapp but it is very very predominant in india um, and if your video happens to go viral then it is a free marketing for you so give that a try um, like all the traditional and digital forms of marketing works very well in india um as as far as our experience and one thing that is insightful is india is still very very big on newspaper the circulations has going up unlike most of the developed part of the world so do explore that option of place placing your advertisement in a targeted market or with the targeted audience if you are a brand owner and um, the best part of india is that india uh, i mean english is wide, widely accepted and uh, so you you may have to you, you may be able to reuse most of your marketing material or do little bit of adaptation so with that um i've presented uh, my experience in few minutes i had uh, but feel free to reach out to me in the uh, in this uh, webinar or afterwards and i would be happy to help you in every way possible to get you set up on uh, selling in india Thank you. Well, thank you, Rupesh. That was a great, I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to ask. I'll wait until the next um, small business owner. And he's actually all the way in India. His name is Suri Thacker. Thacker. Um, Mrs. Suri is the managing director of Catalyst CPG Consultants. Suri has over 10 years in the retail and consumer products, goods industry in US and Indian markets. Uh, Catalyst is a consulting firm with a wide array of services to help domestic brands and international brands in being a strategic 360 degree e-commerce partner in the booming Indian subcontinent. Uh, Suri, are you there? Are you ready? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Thank you, Gabriela, for the, for the introduction. Thank you to everyone and the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce and the U.S. Consulate based out of India. That's kind of uh, given me the opportunity to speak to you guys. Uh, it's an e-commerce heavy panel. I'm going to jump into a few things. Um, you know, India is a very promising country, but it's people call it a country. I think it's a continent. It's, uh, it varies so much by region to region from north, south, east, and west. Um, we are probably one of the fastest growing, you know, consumer company, as well as the growth of just internet spreading across the country adoption of like shopping online has gone significantly higher. Uh, basically COVID has been a catalyst to kind of uh, accelerate people to move on to shopping online. And that has been fantastic for us. Um, the, my biggest recommendation, you can see a flurry of funds and a lot of uh, initiatives by US companies, uh, you know, spending a lot of money to come into the Indian market. Jeff Bezos is like probably the biggest testament to that. He spent, he keeps spending every year. He has a budget of at least three to four billion dollars to invest into Amazon India. And to piggyback off that, you know, one of the biggest things I could like tell any business owner that is conscious about how they're going to spend money, uh, you know, while entering a new market, uh, I think Amazon is one of the best places to go to because the system is the same across the globe. And, you know, when you're finding the right partner, you're looking to find trust and you're, you're looking to find validation. Obviously, you know, the Department of Commerce is going to find you the best partner possible. But to, you know, just so that you don't have to second guess yourself or have any doubts while entering a new country. As Jagdeep mentioned earlier on, there's a lot of hurdles that you have to jump in India. But Amazon is transparent. 
it is common across the globe. The systems are same across the globe and it's easy to understand, right? So I would always say your go-to-market should be via Amazon. Number two, I would always say is find a trustworthy partner, a person who knows their particular domain as to they should be the subject matter expert in their domain, right? Uh, if somebody asked me to help sell steel, in India, I would be like, I'm not the right person. When it comes to e-commerce, I think I'm the right person in the country. Um, I think those are like very, very critical aspects. Like as a service, we provide like everything from like sales, marketing, distribution, uh, digital marketing. We are present on every platform in India from Amazon Flipkart. Uh, we own our own warehouses in the country. Um, as Rupesh mentioned previously, India is challenging. You know, please be aware that, you know, don't come with a one-year plan or two-year plan. India is a long-term plan that requires patience. The processes are not the same that exist uh, in the U.S. I've worked in the U.S. I've lived in the U.S. for eight years myself. I'm a U.S. citizen who lives here in India. I understand some of the challenges while working with U.S. companies. They are sometimes confused as to why something cannot be very linear, but... India is very different. And to have that patience to understand that, you know, is critical. So that's the rec uh, recommendation and guidance I could give, you know, anybody out there, uh, all our attendees that are there, be patient with India. It is growing, you know, uh, I think sometimes when we read all articles, you know, it's very inviting. And anytime you start anything, you know, or a business, it's, you know, there's a lot of joy and enthusiasm. Uh, keep that enthusiasm over time. It, you know, don't let it fade away. There's a lot of opportunity once you cross the hurdles and you get a better understanding of the market and you will eventually get there. So um, that's pretty much what I have to say. If anybody has any more questions, please feel free to email me through the Department of Commerce or you guys can ask me during the Q&A right now. Well, Suri, I really appreciate this. And I really re appreciate Rupesh talking about that India is not monolithic. It has a lot of uh, cultures. And very, and this is where I think Anaya comes into place because she's with the U.S. Commercial Service. And like she stated, she has different companies. So um, she can help you. Uh, I mean, yes, contact Rupesh and, of course, Suri if you need help. Uh, but in order to know which city you want to go to and what are the challenges because each country has its challenges. Just like if you're not from the U S U S has a lot of challenges as well. And, but that's the fun part uh, being an exporter, you get to learn the culture and the, um, the situation that is going on. Okay. So I have a lot of questions and I'm going to try and hopefully all of you are going to be able to answer my questions. And here is for um, William Walker, he says, um, I'm with Spectrum Trucking and Logistic. We transport products on all type of trucks and trailers. Are there any opportunities with your program for our business? Uh, Naya, would you like to help that one? I think there's a lot of people who- Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to um, discuss this more one-on-one. -on -one. In, in that particular instance with logistics, it would be partnering with a freight forwarder that Rupesh mentioned um, to help move goods from the U.S. to India. We'd have to look at additional capabilities to explore uh, other opportunities. But just off the top of my head, I would say it would be kind of more in a logistics, getting moving products from place to place, getting it on an airplane or getting it on a ship for export to India. All right, thank you. Yeah, I would say there's always opportunities. Um, then it's your job to look at the different markets and see what works for you. Um, this is another question for Nora. What are the requirements to apply for the grants? Yeah, so the requirements is to be a Texas business and to be in business for at least one year. Um, additionally, you have to be a small business. Um, so medium and large size uh, cannot apply. Um, and 50% of your content has to be US made. Um, if your products, um, if your services, usually uh, you meet that requirement. And there are a few businesses that we do not allow in the grant, and that is uh, law firms, real estate agencies, some educational services, um, and insurance. But other than that, pretty much 
everything is a, a valid business besides those. Wow, Nora. Well, I have another question and I, you kind of touched on it where it says, what about non-product services like consulting services eligible to participate in trade mission step and stipend activities? Yeah, so if you're a consultant um, or, you know, we have a lot of people who are like software consultants. Um, we have a few people that, you know, just our export consultants too, that have applied for the, the grant and been successful in that. So yes, it's open to every, every business except the few that I mentioned. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And actually, I want to piggyback on that and of course, promote MBDA Business Center. If you're a client of MBDA, uh, one of our business advisors actually help you go through the step grant uh, situation. So feel free to reach out to us if you want to learn, if you need help. I mean, as Nora says, it doesn't open till May, but we have time to work through it. Uh, I have another one that says, I usually think about importing from India. It sounds like India wants consultation services like quality. What else would India want from the US? Um, Rupesh uh, or Suri, do you think you can answer that question? Um, yeah, sure. I can uh, take a stab at it. I, if I got the question right, is uh, what else would India would like to import from the US? So uh, this is a wide area of product. It's a very broad uh, statement. But when it comes to consumer goods, you know, a lot of brands currently want to enter the Indian market uh, because they see the boom in e-commerce and the adoption. Uh, that is one of the uh, you know big avenues. I may talk about like a, another avenue, which is like uh, you know food and certain grains. You know, it would be very surprising. A lot of grains as well come in from the U.S. into India. Um, those are. It, the, the market's wide open and, and when you're looking at retail and if you're looking at entering a brand of the country, um, the, you know, and it exists on Amazon in the US and it's fairly well priced, the opportunity exists out here. And it comes, if it comes into commodities, uh, commodities are very volatile. It depends on the pricing. And if your pricing is really good and you work with the right broker or the right people that you would like to work for uh, industry specific, that is critical. Um, you know, you could find the right partner and like work with them. Thank you. I, I'd like to add to what Shira did, uh, mentioned, you know, top U.S. exports to India include agricultural products. He talked about the grains, um, mineral fuels, precious metals, aircraft, machinery, organic chemicals. Um, and so that's just to start, obviously, um, availing yourself of the state of Texas or the MBDA or the chamber to help identify a more thorough list. You can also view trade statistics at our sister bureau, census.gov, to actually narrow down all of the US uh, exports to India. My, my advice would be working with one of the partners here online to actually devise a plan and kind of hone in on where you um, will build your business. Um, we always say the world needs everything, so what can you offer. So kind of narrow down your focus um, to one or two products. If you don't manufacture those products, have the ability to purchase or enter a distribution distribution agreement for those products and then go into the market. Wow, Naya, you are ready there. They were asking questions like a list, what we need to export. Somebody says, is there any possibility for air conditioning goods to sell in India like central units? I think uh, that question will be maybe for Naya. I think that's one of the things that probably they can work with the US Commercial Service and look at the different uh, uh, places in India that they might need that. And also you, we need to see, they may need it, but we also need to see if your price is competitive because I'm sure everyone is trying to grab the India market. Um, I have a question here where they says, with this being a chamber of commerce, are there also opportunities to network with other business owners and entrepreneurs? Are there opportunities for training regarding protocol, customs procedure, and such for international business meetings and, uh, and affairs? Um, I don't know, but I know that um, Naya, you have the Gold Key service, is that correct? And you have other networking events that you work with in order for uh, business owners to network and learn about the different uh, protocols? Uh, absolutely. And I see Jadeep on here as well, who can speak to the Indo-American Chamber. But yes, absolutely. We're all about connecting 
um, folks either locally, statewide, or internationally. A lot of that networking is now happening on events like this and also through our, our District Export Council, of which uh, Jadeep is one of our uh, amazing members. So yes, there, there are opportunities and we're doing training like Gabriella mentioned at the top of the program, we partnered together for the Export Academy. Um, and this is actually the second program I've done with Jadeep in the last uh, year. So we partner very closely together also with the state of Texas to deliver training almost daily, if not weekly. So um, hopefully uh, Jadeep can share some additional um, programs that are coming up. Yeah, I just deliberately switched on because uh, I just wanted to point out to all the attendees and to put on record the fact that India is becoming the world's largest middle-class market. India is also becoming a source of the largest number of technically educated, qualified uh, people to fill the workforce. It's the demographics of India. So looking at India is becoming more and more important for every growing business. In fact, I talk to many people who are in the venture capital business and they say that when they talk to one of their clients, they find out what is your India portion of your uh, work because everybody seems to be looking at India and especially with the recent situation, uh, India is becoming strategically more important. But coming back to today's focus on export, uh, the chamber is here to support you with Naya's office, with our other connections in India. And we have two members of the business community here to also offer their services. So I have put my email address on the link, uh, the chat box. It's info, it's, my email is Jagdeep, my first name, J-A-G-D-I-P at IACCGH.com. You can reach out to me directly and set up a call. We'd love to help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, to understand your needs and see how we can help you. Today's program is more general, more educational, and we'll talk to Naya and Gabriella and maybe come back with a one-on-one -on -one program where we start from scratch to tell people who are wanting to export, and we'll bring in the Houston District Export Council, so that could be a different event. But to answer the question that was asked, through the chamber, through the MBDA, we, and through the Houston District Export Council, uh, which I encourage you all to consider joining if you are exporters. We offer various opportunities to network. So the chamber, since the start of the pandemic, has done over 50 events, and they range in different topics. But I don't want to steal from Gabriella's time, so I'm going to send you back to Gabriella. But I did want to mention the chamber is here to help you. Uh, again, my email is jagdip, jagdip at iaccgh.com. You're welcome to reach out to me. And we are here to help. Thank you. Back to you, Gabriella. No, Jagdeep, I appreciate this whole point is to educate people and to give us, you know, right now with COVID and us being working here, I encourage all of you to send us an email to text you. I know that if you are part of the MBDA clients, you'll receive the PowerPoint presentation, or if not, you can send an email to info. I also want to say, if you want to reach out to mbda at hccs.edu, if you need to get in contact with any of the speaker, we'll try to make sure to connect you with them as well. Um, but I want to actually touch, if that's okay, Naya and Nora, I know you guys are like uh, great, but I want to talk to Rupesh and Suri because I want them to answer one question, and is, what kind of hurdles have you encountered recently and how you overcame? overcame? I'm going to let uh, Rupesh first to answer and then Suri, if that's okay. Uh, sure. Um, hurdles. Um, at one point, um, India, I mean, we used to sell um, quite a bit of cosmetic products uh, sourced from US to India. And the everything was set and flow was uh, coming along well. Um, at one point, um, some rules changed or some something happened. And most of our uh, shipments were stopped at the like uh, stopped at the customs uh, because uh, they wanted some kind of a compliance certificate. Um, we, like it was unexpected, but um, we were able to like uh, we were able to resolve that issue within two days. Uh, one is that we 
contacted um, local local authorities i mean we have a team in india so we contacted uh, local authorities and through um, kind of a political government connection we actually presented that okay these are the products that we have always been importing and customers are waiting for it and these are the certificates and they cons- they understood it they considered it and they we were able to clear it and we were also able to establish plan going forward so we reached out to all the brands of cosmetics that we were selling uh, got the required certificate in place and within 7 days that like we were able to resolve that issue for good because now all the certificates that we need uh, the testing certificate and approval um, approvals and all were already in place and it was lo- lo- listed on the like it was all loaded on the cloud um, so they could refer any time and it was li- little bump but it was not impossible to overcome so do expect some uh, surprises like that um, it's going to happen but do not be afraid by it i mean you like it would, as much as india like i mean the problem crops up there is always a fair solution to it and people are quite business friendly so m- most of the problems are uh, like can be overcome that's yeah it. i think i'd like piggyback on the same thing that rupesh said you know uh, sometimes with the uh, change of like regulation and policies every now and then from sector from sector to sector because um, it you know you guys would know it better than anybody else any trade council wants to improve their import and export deficits that exists so policies change based on the industry if imports are too high of a particular industry they would change it um in exporting toys i had the same issue that was there where rupesh was talking about the beauty cosmetics it gets held up in customs there's nothing you can do about it you have to go and pro- provide all the extra documentation that is required and um you know you can probably uh, you will eventually get there you know it's a hurdle but you'll get there i think one more um uh, thing uh, you would need to be forewarned of and to understand the certain challenges that come on india is like payments are not as systemic versus like the us companies and bank remittances back to the country of origin are a little challenging because the banking system is little complicated uh in india a lot of documentation is required for each export into the country and to send dollars out of the country uh, or send payments out of the country uh, there's a significant amount of work it does it's you know in the us a uh, owner could just log in and add the business and you know kind of just click a button and it goes through it's very friendly the banking system but out here there's a lot of documentation to be done prior to issuing payments back to the us Thank you so much both of you. Um have I really Yes. Sorry before you go on to your next question I do want to add a few comments so thank you Rupesh thank you sir for your comments and that just highlights um something that I mentioned in my presentation the non uh tariff trade barriers the changes and regulations changes in policy that sometimes happen overnight can have a significant impact on on uh trade between the two countries and that's something that we at the commercial service and the department of commerce are constantly monitoring and and companies will also always you know or can reach out to us um for assistance um you know we have bilateral conversations with customs officials and the different ministries um in India and other markets you also highlight the importance of having a local partner we press that it happened quickly um because he had boots on the ground and that's what we always advocate that companies especially starting off find a, a partner to be on the ground to represent their interests they also speak the language they're in the time zone they know the culture and they can get access to those ministry officials very quickly and then um last but not least payments and now that's a different program but certainly how you want to get paid and ensuring that you get paid um because uh here um you know most companies would love to have cash in advance um but as uh, Sharit mentioned um different markets have um financial 
issues and financial challenges and you got to be prepared for that and have we um, at the commercial service here in Houston work with our SBA colleagues on their export financing tools as well as the export import bank which has the credit um, insurance to ins to make sure that you get paid um, insure your um, accounts so that you get paid so the um, we love that we're able to connect uh, companies to not only our resources and tools, but the full fledge of both city, local, and federal uh, resources to help you navigate um, exporting. Thanks, Gabriela. Not a problem, not a problem. Uh, oh, I was actually gonna put Rupesh and Sudi on the spot if that's okay, because a lot of people are asking your email address. Um, do you think it's possible um, later we can add it to the PowerPoint? So if anybody that- Yeah, you could share. You yeah. can share your contact information because there's a lot of people out here that they're asking for the two men who have the business uh, component. So I wanted to make sure you guys know about it. Um, well, I would, rec uh, Gabriela, I would recommend anybody who wants their email address should reach out to you and I because we would also like to know who's reaching out to our speakers. And oh, oh, let, no. us, let, us, let us compile those email addresses and send them on. So we also have a connect with those speakers. So. Uh, my suggestion is anybody who wants to connect with both of our speakers, uh, reach out to both Gabriella and the chamber. My email again is jagdeep at isccgh.com. She's already shared hers and we will put together all your emails and forward them to both of them so that they can connect with you. I hope that's fair. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. But I mean, I still you use Rupesh and Suri if somebody reach out to me, but thank you. Right. Uh, the other question is we are actually at the ending time, but do we have the ability to go a little over? I would like to cover as many of the questions as possible. So, uh, I'll let you decide. Okay. Uh, I have I'm, I'm a little, <laughs> it's mid, I'm a little sleepy. It's midnight. So <laughs> you can roll off if you want to. Thanks a lot, but we can carry on. Thanks a lot. I'll, I'll stay for five minutes and then I'll probably sign off. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think, I think after we can stay for five more minutes, uh, but I have yeah. a lot of questions here where they say, um, I'm from India. I would like to get in touch with US firms into importing products for passive fireproofing. Where can I register for sourcing such interested uh, US firm? I think uh, the best thing will be to get in touch with the Chamber of Commerce. I think they have a lot of access to even US companies that are looking to um, have any relationship with India or just send us your contact information. The next question, I'm gonna to try to go quickly on this. And on our portal, companies put their projects, talk about the product for which they're looking for distributors. And not, well, somebody's just doing promotions and all of the connections are made free of cost. I really don't know. Um, I have another one here that talks about, um, sorry. Uh, so Nora, are there opportunities to export service such as leadership training for professional at the workplace and youth in the school system? So if there's specifically a company that's doing the specific um, like youth leadership, that would probably fall under the education and not be an eligible business. Okay, thank you so much. And then Naya, you talk about market research analysis. Does that include potential competitors and barriers to entry? Absolutely. So that is under our customized market research program. You can actually submit five to 10 questions and then the embassy or consulate, our team there on the ground will go out and get those answers for you. So absolutely. And, and the cost of those services is fairly re uh, discounted. So uh, Naya, uh, please confirm that they are not free, but they are fairly discounted. Is that correct? That, that is correct. So um, we do have fee-based services. You know, our counseling is free. We're, we don't, you know, charge billable hours just to talk to us. And most of our market research is free. But if it's customized for your particular company, um, say the matchmaking services or the customized market research, those are fee-based and um, they're based, um, the fees are based on the size of your company. I'm happy to talk about that offline, um, about your individual needs. And of course, I always encourage folks to apply for the STEP program because those grants can cover our services. I think to respect uh, Surid's uh, suggestion that he needs to roll off, uh, yeah, Gabriel, I, uh, ask the last question and then I'll just pose no, a word no, of thanks. No questions at all. I just wanted to say thank you to Naya, Sur, Rupesh, Nora. I really appreciate 
as you can see, there's a lot of people who are interested in export opportunities. I, I know that all of you here in Texas have stories, so thank you so much. I mean, midnight for a small business owner must be really late, you know, uh, so I really appreciate you staying up at night for this event. Uh, and, um, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Jack Deep, for allowing us to co-host. Jack Deep, I know you have a few words to talk about. Yeah, so before I thank everybody, we want to thank Gabriella, Nora, Naya, Rupesh, and Surin for sharing their knowledge. We want to thank today's co-hosts, the Minority Business Development Agency, our partners, Club 24, Houston Community College, Houston District Export Council, the Houston Minority Supply Development Council, Thai Houston, the U.S. India Chamber of Commerce, Dallas, Fort Worth, World Trade Center, Mumbai. And also, I want to thank our sister chamber, Poonam Burayas, who is the president, is on the call uh, from uh, Denver, Colorado. So thank you, uh, Poonam, for joining us. Uh, I want to thank our partner organizations who help promote all our events, our media partners who get the word out about the events later. Uh, we invite you to join our next event, which is on March the 31st, uh, with the president of MD Anderson talking about how they are working on making cancer history. Uh, we have a lot more information about doing business with India because the chamber's core strength is the India advantage. So you're welcome to reach out to us uh, you're welcome to become a member of the chamber. We are there to serve our members. Uh, we'd love to help you. And as I said, send your questions to Gabriella and to the chamber, and we will forward them to the two speak all the speakers. Uh, it's up to them to respond to as few or as many as they want to. But with that, thank you, everybody who joined us as attendees. Thank you to our panelists, and thank you, Gabriella and Mark Craig. Uh, who came up with this idea of this joint event. And I, I just want to uh, bring the event to its conclusion. I believe it was very meaningful and you will all get a copy of the recording. If you are not in our database, you need to email us at info at iscgh.com to get a copy of the recording. With that, uh, Surit, good night. Thank you for staying up late for us. I'm looking forward to having uh, dinner with you in Mumbai in the near future and yes. lunch with all of you in Houston when we can get back to in-person events. Uh, thank Pleasure. you very thank much. Thank you all so much. Yeah. And please feel free yeah. to reach out and you know network with me. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.